You said H A and Fury. I'm going to go with Fury. I think that Fury right now is top 10. The guy is 6'9. He's big, but he's still athletic and, and he's a guy that can frustrate you. Um, I think Wilder was more of a threat to Fury than Joshua would be. Uh, so, I mean, I could be wrong, but my, my picks did not quite recently. I think Fury would take that one. Is there any upcoming heavyweight you feel that can challenge Fury? You know what? I've, I've seen a handful of them, and I've been caught up in too many other things right now that I'm not paying pay attention. But uh, I don't think so. I mean, I think maybe a couple more years you might have somebody. You know, I, get, I say this all the time when I said on my podcast. Um, the generation of the heavyweights, I think you love to see that, has changed. You know, you got guys, your guys are 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, 6'9", six, 6'8", six, six, and, and they can fight. Um, I know people will all get stuck on their era, and it's hard. You know, when they, people still think Harry Grubb was the best little weight of all time. You know, if you guys ever see the videos of them boxing, but um, and people have to realize, like, Sports uh, technology, sports uh, dieting and nutrition, everything's advancing. You can see it, you know. There's going to be somebody coming up. We can see it in a slam dunk contest that just happened. You know, um, the guys are doing things. Michael Jordan, Dominic Wilkins, dunk wouldn't have really been nothing compared to these. Uh, baseball, you see it uh, in a 40 times in the combine. You see the difference. So what I'm saying is there, there's going to be kids, guys coming up, and they're going to be big, and they're going to be 6'6", six, 6'7". Six, six, and it's happening quick, and I think that Barry's reign right now, we're using his size advantage, is big, but I don't think it's going to have an issue with guys. So I do think that he still has another year or so to you know, dominate the heavyweight division. But I think you're starting to see a new breed of heavyweights that's so, so taking over. Do you think it should be a super heavyweight? Another level because I think you're gonna. You got seven feet tall yeah. guys. I think at some point you're gonna to have to bring in. That's a really good question. Somebody else asked me about that. I think so. I think you're gonna to have to have maybe like two ten, two fifteen, or even two twenty in under weight class. Maybe just make that your heavyweight, and then have the super heavyweight because the guys aren't getting that big. And again, they're also athletic. You know, back in the day, it used to be your big, your guys that were big as kids, and they were just overly oversized, and they would become heavyweight fighters. Um, now you're seeing like athletes that are that big, that fight. Do you think Usyk can beat Fury? Do you rate him high? I think Usyk is a hell of a fighter. Um, the only thing that worries me with Usyk is he's six four. People keep saying he's not that big. He's okay right now for heavyweight. Um, He's in great shape, he can box, he can move. Um, I think with Fury, now you're talking about a guy against 6'9", 275 pounds. I don't know, I mean, unless he finds some way to really get in there and tire out. Um, Fury, I think it'll be hard. I think Usyk stands a good chance to make a lot of noise at the end with a stop. So you don't think even though Joshua may be fundamentally superior, technically superior to Joshua, while it would be enough to get the job done? It's, it's a really hard call on that too, I'm going to explain that. Joshua, before I thought he was too genetically, he's already big as it is, but I think his strength and conditioning uh, workouts, I thought he was too muscular, and we've seen that he got tired with a lot of his fights, and it takes a lot more oxygen and blood to get to the muscles and keep him going. And, uh, and we've seen him with Klitschko, even though he won, Klitschko was a little older and whatnot, but uh, we see him get muscle work. And then that second rematch with Ruiz, I kept saying, he gets the strength and conditioning trainer, comes in, Finds another way to get him in shape and strong without the muscle size, he'll be fine. But guess what? He looked good. He looked good in that fight. He didn't get too tired. And, uh, yeah, and he, he took some mass down. You know, it wasn't as big. He didn't get us out. That clip. When I say fair, I mean, I still think fair he won the fight, but it makes it a lot more interesting if he keeps the same thing going into this fight that he did with the rematch with Breeze. However, the, the training was for him, the strength and conditioning. If he can do that, I mean, you may have a fight on your hands. But I'm still leaning with Fury. Some people feel like Conor is fighter as well. He was too uh, tentative. He should have uh, pressed his advantage. Uh, yeah, well, he, I don't think he's that type of fighter. Uh, he really did with uh, Parker. You know, he did with some guys. And, uh, so I think I could hurt my brother too. And it's still, you just don't learn that overnight. You know? So I don't care who they get to bring him in the train. When you get a trainer that comes in on a career that's already established, Usually you're there to sharpen his style. You know, we're not there to change him. We tried to see him with Buddy McGirt and uh, Gotti. Gotti came out boxing, but we see what happened. As soon as Gotti got hit, all that shit went out the window. Everything he learned went out the window and it was boxing. So, same thing, I mean, I don't know if he's tentative, he's going to be that type of fighter.
Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm going to do. That's the back. Uh, yeah. Kelly, what do you think about uh, just, just Canelo? I was going to say Canelo versus uh, Billy Joe Song. It seems like that's going to be the fight. You know, your former, or well, the division right above your former division, 168. What, what do you think about that fight? How does that fight play out? I got Canelo. I mean, listen, people knock you know, go out and knock out uh, the Incredible Hulk, and somebody will come in there and be like, well, the Incredible Hulk was just knocked that night, you know. <laughs> the kid don't, guys like that, like Crawford don't get the credit, um, Canelo don't get the credit that they deserve. And it seems like anymore this day and age, nobody's going to get it. Somebody is going to hop on the boxing sites and whatnot and talk shit. Excuse my language, but it's just the way it is. Um, I think Canelo, he's he just go back, look at his resume, the guys he fought. He's, he deserves what he gets the credit. And I think Billy Joe Saunders is a dangerous fight, but I'm still leaning with Canelo. I think the style that Saunders is going to fight is going to play right into Canelo, you know, especially the body attack and everything else that Canelo does. I think it's a big opportunity and a big fight. And I think Canelo was the people, people look at the Lara fight though and they said that style should give should give Canelo problems. No, I think I think Billy Joe Saunders fights tries to fight like uh, Sergio Martinez. I think it's the same exact style. I don't think he's good at it though. You know. Um, he looked he looked a little sluggish in his last fight. What about fights like that against against uh, Canelo? I think it would be a, a fast fight. Who's who's Kelly Pavlik's uh, top three pound for him? Up in the air now, and I'm going to explain this. If Lomachenko goes in and, and beats Tiafimo like he did uh, Rigo, guys like that, it's hard not to have him number one. You got guys like Crawford, who right now Crawford is he's up there right now at number one. So you can one, two, three, and Canelo. Because I mean, how can you not? So my opinion is, if somebody came in and said, I got Crawford number one pound for pound, and I don't. I'm not going to call him crazy because right now it's all right now. They're all like a fight or two away from claiming that spot. And if Spence comes back and dominates and gets a good opposition, he's right back in the game. So it's really hard to get, like I said, Lomachenko because TFMO is a fantastic fighter. I, mean, I think that kid's a year away from being a complete package. And that's why I got to take Lomachenko in this fight because I just don't think right now there's levels to everything. You just take your time and come up. Uh, but again, too, Lomachenko and his style is speed, and agility, and reflexes. And Lomachenko's what now, 32? So if he loses that much against a guy like Tiafimo, that can be a big difference. You know? uh, so we'll see. But whatever happens, how that play unfolds, that's going to kind of dictate the um, way that pound for pound the rankings go. So but right now, that's up for anybody. What do you have with Loma and Tiafimo close to 50 50? Or are you. I'm, I'm well, I think Lomachenko, you know, and again, we don't know, because I thought when he fought Rigadon, of course, Lomachenko was another one, uh, he'll never get the credit. I thought that was going to be a great fight, I truly did, I thought it was going to be a, a chess match, and he went there and no Maschenko, you know. What about the Mo Hooker and uh, Regis Pogray? What do you have out of that one? Maurice Hooker and uh, Regis Pogray. Well, uh, you know what, I'm going to have to go with Hooker in that fight. I think he's too big. Uh, I like Pogray's, but I think Hooker will take that fight. Thank you, Kelly. Thanks, Kelly. Thank you. 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 Thank you.